Hello, my name is David Greenwood. I'm a partner at Odges Burnson, the executive search firm. As I mentioned previously, I'm interviewing a number of senior executives in the region, particularly around e-commerce. I'm delighted to say that I have Sajat Bajani, who's the vice president of e-commerce, one of the largest retail retailers in the region, as a day um, to give you some context, Azadea has over 650 stores operating in 12 markets and 20,000 employees. Welcome, Sajad. Good afternoon, David. Thank you for um, inviting me on to this, um, this really good panel. And I'm um, really looking forward to sharing some of the um, challenges and opportunities around um, what's going on in the market at the moment. So thank you. Pleasure. Now, one of the first questions I wanted to pose to you, Sajat, you've clearly been in the front line within uh, Azadea and particularly e-commerce with a number of your brands um, and the uplift with the pandemic. Could you, in a, in a relatively concise way, share what you believe the challenges and the opportunities will look like in the next 12 months? Sure. So I think, you know, um, the challenges and opportunities are still very fresh. You know, I think every day, all of the players in the market have seen, have seen new challenges and, and new opportunities. You know, working in a market where we've had, or we've not been able to get our drivers out onto the roads because of permit restrictions, warehouse restrictions in terms of social distancing. We've had last mile operators that have crumbled under the, the daily volume that's akin to Black Friday, but daily volumes akin to Black Friday. So clearly there have been, there have been a lot of challenges and a lot of, um, a lot of new solutions that we've already had to think about. And I think what I would like to do today is just talk about four points really when it comes when it comes to those challenges and opportunities. The first one is the speed of digitization. Secondly, the role of the store and omnichannel. And then try and just finish off with a with a quick discussion on social distancing and unmanned stores. So you know if we look at the speed of digitization first of all, I think we all know there's been this massive flurry of, of sellers trying to get online. And I think one of the best um, measures for that is actually the stock market. So if you look at the growth that Shopify and, and Adobe, who own Magento, you know, two of the sort of platforms that are you know, used by SMEs, both of their share prices have jumped 20% and 15% respectively. Now, that's not bad in a market where all the most players' share prices have sort of dived or, or jumped off. So we've seen this real big rush from lots of SMEs to get online. Yet we've seen new grocery platforms emerge in the region. We've seen new delivery platforms emerge. So I think there's been a real push from sellers to get online. But I think what's, what's really good or what's really um, sustainable about this is that we've seen consumers obviously change their shopping habits also. So if you said to my wife four weeks ago, have you ever heard of InstaShop or El Grosser? She would have probably said, no, I haven't. Although she shops online very regularly. So we've seen this massive migration of consumers starting to consume different online services based on the needs that we have right now. And I think the challenge that we will all have is that once we come out of this um, period and once malls become a little bit more accessible, is that the share that online will take will be higher than what it was pre-COVID. Therefore, the investment challenge will become more important for retailers in terms of how do they invest appropriately in those channels to create the right experiences um, to make sure that they invest in the right fulfillment proposition. So I think what we're seeing is a massive acceleration of that speed of digitization. The second point would be around omnichannel. So, you know, we've, we've been around omnichannel now for a very long time. And I think some of the principles of omnichannel are going to be um, called into question and we'll have to, we'll have to change. So if we look at the principles of omnichannel, we talk about click and collect, we talk about refunds in store, and we talk about things like ship from store. Well, I think the COVID environment actually challenges some of those um, principles. Collect from store may not be as um, interesting to customers as it once was, and it may not be as efficient to retailers as it once was. So, you know, as a deal, we've had a few brands that have tested automated vending machines over the last 12 months. And that's been a very interesting exercise. It's something that's been used, you know, in the West for quite a while now. And I think what we will see is a proliferation of automated vending machines, lockers, but perhaps they won't be in malls. They'll be what is now being termed as curbside collection in petrol stations and so on. So 
as we try to manage this social distancing and convenience, I think there's going to be this growth in click and collect, but it probably won't be in the stalls and the malls. You know, another principle of omni-channel is, um, is free returns. So especially coming from apparel, which is, you know, what Azadia's strength actually is that what really drove fashion um, in the West was, was free returns. And free returns are generally something that are transacted in store. Now, currently in the UAE, there's some government re um, restrictions around refunds and exchanges. We don't believe that will be permanent, but again, it just shows some of the challenges that social distancing is, is obviously having within the retail environment. Now, of course, online today in the UAE, you can still place your order and get a free return. We'll pick your product up and we'll, and we'll take it back to our warehouses. But that has a real big cost for businesses and returns through courier pickup is expensive. And you know, what we've seen over the last year is the likes of ASOS and Amazon actually target what we call serial returners. So customers that were basically buying 10 shirts and returning nine. So again, I think you know, as, we, as we move forward, returns from store might get more difficult and therefore you need to look at your logistics costs and your reverse logistics in terms of your returns. The third point on Omnichannel would be very much around ship from store. So I think those of us that were fortunate enough to have e-commerce um, capabilities and omni-channel capabilities with integration into our stores, we've managed to use our stores even more so as um, fulfillment um, locations over the last few weeks, and that will only continue. However, you know, a lot of these, uh, especially the grocery players, will talk about how inefficient it is for them to pick from store because picking from stores takes so much longer um, and now you'll have some customers in the store as well, so it's not an easy process. But if your stores are now becoming 20, 30, 40% of their business is now, being, is now online, and those store staff are picking orders from the store, the store isn't the most efficient or um, profitable place to be conducting that type of operation. So I think the whole omni-channel piece will probably evolve quite significantly. It won't be that we won't be omni-channel anymore, but I think the role of the store and the physical will obviously will obviously change significantly. Mm -hmm. And I think that would lead me on to the, the last point, which is around the, the role of the unmanned store. So, you know, the unmanned store is basically, you know, no queues, no checkout, no sort of, you know, physical payment, if you like. And I think, you know, we've seen this next big thing in technology talked about for a while now, and e-commerce giants like Alibaba, JD, and Amazon have all created these amazing retail stores that you know are basically automated stores that have um, electronic shelf label technology, RFID or radio frequency identification, computer vision, robotics, facial recognition, and lots of other tech. And I think Alibaba were a great example. They created something called Hema, and um, that was basically this you know, fully robotic store. And basically, it was a full immersion into a retail experience that was yeah, very expensive, that had a lot of technology investment, but basically showed through artificial intelligence how you could create this, this store that didn't require human beings. Now, I think we'll see a resurgence in, in those types of store experiences where obviously we'll, we'll minimize the human interaction where possible. We spoke about click and collect earlier on and automated vending machines, but obviously I think what will now really push the, um, the unmanned store is, um, is 5G. And I don't think we want to get into the conspiracy theories around 5G, but 5G will enable all of that artificial intelligence, the virtual reality, the augmented reality, and a lot of those payment um, connections that you need to be able to have at a very fast speed in order to process the, the unmanned store. There's some really interesting insights. I think um, another one that you've raised in the past with me is the cash on delivery or the the, the change of, of consumer habits and not having the cash on delivery, not physically using that banknote and, and going, um, you know, using that credit card. And I certainly know the likes of Visa and MasterCard and even some of the aggregators within the F&B environment are coming up with the QR code so that the lack of interaction with a product to purchase is definitely going to be a change. And, and some of these changes, I think, were always inevitable, but they've certainly been fast forwarded, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing.